Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm gonna to be working on Ugly Truck, the 2008.1 swapped Chevy Silverado 1500. Now, as you probably know, we're in the middle of a turbo build on the 8.1, but I gotta admit, this is probably one of the most frustrating things that I've had to build in quite a long time, because I keep hitting roadblock after roadblock. But I think I've got it all figured out, and just like I promised, by the end of today, the turbo is gonna be mounted under the hood of that truck. My name's LT, and if you like cool truck content, well, you definitely wanna subscribe to this channel. Let's get to it. All right, just to bring everybody up to speed, here's the deal. This is an 8.1 swap, and I finished it up just a couple of months ago, and I put, I don't know, maybe a thousand miles on it, just kind of horsing around and doing burnouts and stuff like that. It's all stock, and it runs great, but it's time to add some more power. So I'm gonna be installing a single S480 kind of right here in this area. But like I mentioned, there's been a few challenges in getting the hot side completed. So first, I'll just walk you through some of the roadblocks that we've had to overcome. My first plan for the exhaust manifold was to use this driver side manifold from an 8.1 Suburban, flip it around on the passenger side, still mounted low, because remember, you can't flip these. I cut off the downspout and I was gonna use this three inch Schedule 40 90 degree pipe, kind of come along here and weld it in in an upward facing position. And then to fill in the gap between the three inch and the roughly two and a half inch of the manifold, I was gonna add a section of three inch straight pipe, basically saw this one in half, saw the manifold in half, and joined the two together, and this would be the log manifold. However, the problem with that is there's just not enough space between the bottom of the manifold, the frame rail, and the motor mount to make all this fit, because this three inch pipe actually has a three and a half inch outside diameter, and it's just too big for the space. My next plan was to build a 100% from scratch style of log manifold. So the first thing I needed to do was order a flange. The flange just showed up and it's this guy right here. And as you can tell, these ports, they're massive. Now, a lot of times when guys are building a custom log manifold, they'll grab this stuff right here. This is Schedule 10 inch and a half pipe. And it has an inch and a half inside diameter. And it's kind of on the small side for what I wanted to do. Remember, eventually, I want this thing to be putting out just over a thousand horsepower and I was worried that the inch and a half Schedule 10 pipe just wasn't going to be big enough to support that much power. So I grabbed some two inch Schedule 40. Now this is thicker and it has a much bigger diameter and that's why I got this big massive flange has a two and a three eighths opening to fit the two inch Schedule 40 pipe. And as you can see it fits in nicely but the problem there well, this flange is so big, it interferes with all the bolts on the outermost row that hold the cylinder head to the block. So, basically, I can't use this flange without drastically modifying it or modifying the bolts that hold the cylinder head onto the block, and neither of those are an option. So, it's on to plan number three. My final plan still revolves around using a driver's side manifold on the passenger side, but this time it's not going to be a log manifold. Instead, it's kind of a two into one design with two individual manifolds, one on each side of the engine. Instead of the big three inch schedule pipe that I just couldn't get to fit around all the other parts of the engine, I grabbed some two and a half inch schedule 4090s. Now these are a much closer fit to the outlet of the exhaust manifold. So I'm gonna weld one of them onto the front of the now passenger side manifold pointing up. I'm gonna take the second 90 and I'm gonna kinda of cut these at an angle and I'm gonna make a merge collector of sorts. Two two and a half inch 90s joining into a single straight section of three inch Schedule 40 pipe, which is where the turbo is going to sit on top of. Now, like I said, one of these 90s is gonna sit on the uh, passenger side manifold. The other one is gonna kinda of split off and allow a pipe to run just alongside the manifold, which is where the driver side is gonna to feed together. I'll have room for a wastegate, I'll have both sides together, and I won't have any restriction in flow. Now, these stock manifolds, they might not look that good, but if you check out the ports, well, they're massive. In fact, they're a lot bigger than the port on the cylinder head is, so I don't think I'm gonna have any major restrictions you know, using these stock manifolds. So, I'm confident this will work. It's the final plan. It took me a while to get here, but now all I gotta do is get started.
I've got the fit up work complete on the Y pipe and I'm just about ready to tack weld it together. Now on the branch of the Y that goes right onto the manifold, I added this two and a half inch tall extension just to kind of help raise the outermost pipe up and above the framer. It's kind of going to sit something like that. Now, because I added this straight section when I made my slash cut, well, this half has a nice symmetrical U shape on it. However, when I made the corresponding slash cut on the opposite side, because it's part of a 90 degree bend, well, as you can see, the shape kind of hooks forward and to the front. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't fit perfectly, perfectly together. It does leave a little bit of a gap. I don't know if you can see it, but it does leave a little bit of a gap kind of, well, kind of on the front side right there. Now, it's not a huge deal. I don't think it's really going to affect the flow of the manifold and I can easily weld it together. So I'm not really worried about it leaking or being structurally unsafe. It's just, it kind of bugs me that they're not symmetrical, but that's really just the constraints that I have to work around in order to make this work. So I guess now all I got to do is just weld it together. So I am super pumped because we're in the home stretch and we're almost ready to bolt the turbo onto the 8.1. So let me show you where we're at. This for the most part is our completed manifold. This originally was on the driver's side of an 8.1 Suburban, but now it's going to be mounted on the passenger side. And the gases from the now driver's side manifold are going to be feeding in right here. And there's a Y pipe that merges both the passenger and driver's side together. Now you'll notice this is an oval shape right here and the scheduled pipe that I'm using is, well, obviously round. Um, but there's a quick workaround if you happen to have a press because all I did is I, well, put this guy in the press and squished it and I was able to get it to match up perfectly right there with the shape of the merge. And the turbo is gonna sit right up here on the flange. Now I do need a finalized placement. Um, this is a 45 degree bend and it's probably actually not the one I'm gonna use. I probably do need to take a 90 and cut it somewhere around the 60 degree mark because the 45 is a little bit kind of too straight up, but we are so close to getting that turbo bolted up. So let's continue on.
Well, I am super excited right now because for the most part, the turbo manifold for the A1 swap is 100% complete. So I'll just go over a couple of things that I did when I welded this together. First of all, you might have noticed that I did bolt the turbine housing onto the T6 flange. And that's just to kind of prevent any sort of warping. Now this flange is half inch thick steel and the Schedule 40 pipe I believe is about a quarter of an inch wall thickness. So it does take quite a bit of heat to properly weld these two together. I think I had my machine running somewhere around 190 amps, which is almost as much as it'll do. So yeah, it does put a lot of heat into the part. Now this is mild steel, so it isn't gonna warp quite as bad as stainless wood. When you're welding stainless, you really, really have to be careful of it and manage your heat input. But with mild steel, it's not as bad, but I still just take the precautions to bolt whatever you're welding together, whether that's a V-band or a turbo, again, just to prevent any sort of warping. Now, there are two things that I'm waiting on which prevent this manifold from being 100% complete. The first is the two and a half inch V-band, which will go right here. And this is what's gonna to connect to the driver side manifold, you know, down underneath the motor. And the second is the waste gate. I'm not exactly sure where I'm gonna connect that up yet, but I think it's gonna be kind of right down here in this area. So the wastegate will be standing straight up in the air. It'll be easy to access underneath the hood to change a spring or whatever. Um, and it'll have nice smooth flow into the wastegate so it'll be able to control boost. Now, I think the V-band will be here in the morning, so I'll get that welded on before I put the manifold in. But other than that, as soon as this thing cools down, I'll bolt it on the truck and I'll show you what it's gonna look like. All right, boys and girls, it's the moment of truth. Ugly truck is officially turbocharged. That's right, we've got an S480 mounted onto the side of an 8.1, all swapped into a Silverado 1500. Now you'll notice I do have the turbo mounted off at an angle, and there's a couple reasons why I chose to do it that way. Um, it would have fit straight ahead, but the compressor cover would have been somewhere in here about, I don't know, four or five inches away from the radiator. Um, I just didn't have enough room to run a big filter, so I ran it off at an angle. Now I've got a good, honest, I don't know, eight or nine, 10 inches or so between the compressor cover and the core support to run a big filter. Now the downpipe will be a bit of a challenge, but honestly, I, I guess it won't be too bad because I'll just get a tight radius four inch bend that goes back and then down. The very last part of the exhaust that I have yet to figure out is the waste gate. And my plan is to run it right here on the long side of that radius that goes into the turbine housing. I'll run the wastegate straight up and that'll kind of be the best angle in terms of exhaust flow to control boost. And the screamer pipe or the wastegate dump pipe or whatever you want to call it, I think I'll have just enough room to kind of go straight back through there and actually merge back into the downpipe because I like to recirculate them whenever possible. Um, down below, I still have to build the crossover pipe, but that's going to be fairly straightforward and I'll show you next time. Uh, this piece of pipe right here, this just kind of represents where it's going to run alongside the manifold. And then it's going to come up right in that area. Um, another cool thing, the stock plug wires, they're going to fit exactly where they are. So I don't have to run, you know, any sort of weird funky plug wires or I don't have to relocate the coils. They're far enough away from any sources of heat. So I won't have any problems there. Now, there is one pretty significant thing that I had to give up, which I'm kind of irritated about, but I just didn't see any way to work around it. And that's the air conditioning. Um, it gets really hot here in the summer. I am cold blooded. I love the winter time. So I also love AC, but there just was no way to make it work with that transition pipe merging upward. And you, you can just kind of see where the AC pump was. There's just no way to get it all to work together. So for now, the AC had to go. Now, there is something that I can try a little bit later on, and it's from the Kodiak trucks, I believe, that had an 8.1. Some of them had a high-mounted AC pump, so it's just a different accessory drive, and I think they put the pump somewhere right through here, and if I do that, I might be able to get my AC working again. Um, it's honestly kind of low on the priority list. It just sucks that I have to give it up for now, but that's a problem for another day. 
Um, in terms of the to-do list and stuff that is yet to happen, I've got to get the oil source uh, plumbed in. I got to get an oil drain tapped into the pan, uh, but we're making good headway and this is a major milestone. So I'm super excited. Um, I do want to say thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of this video. I know it's a long one, but like I said, it was just so cool to get this turbo mounted up. Uh, I got a lot of great content coming for the ugly truck and I got some cool stuff for the Suburban that'll probably happen on the next upload. I'm going to be changing out the transfer case to get rid of that old crappy MP246 that's kind of grinding and clunking and making some awful noises. I did take a trip to a junkyard recently. As you can see, there's some new parts right there that are going to get swapped out. But until next time, I want to say thank you guys for watching. I do honestly appreciate it very much. If you haven't already, help me out. Hit that subscribe button and follow along with the saga of the ugly truck and the Suburban, which we have yet to name. So my name's LT. Thank you guys for watching.